are a part of as well. And collectively, we are pretty remarkable because we have a mind and a consciousness that allows us to scope our reality with intention. And there are aspects of our reality that we have created that are amazing. We have art and music. We have leaders that genuinely care about the well-being of their people. We have individuals that have dedicated their lives to helping others. We have areas of the earth that are covered with life and are filled with biodiversity. And when I think about all these aspects of the world that we have created, I think, wow, this is a nice reality we have made for ourselves. But then reality sets in. And I think about the 700 million people living in extreme poverty. I think about the farmer I met whose livelihood is compromised by naturally, by anthropogenically natural disasters. I think about leaders who are not motivated to do what is best for their people. I think about a piece of land that was once full of life, but is now, but now a factory sits there emitting fossil fuels into the atmosphere. And I think this cannot be a true reflection of what humans are actually capable of creating. Why is it that we allow a world of neglect and greed to continue to occur? And will there ever be a day when we step back and look at the world that we have created and decide that it's time to make a difference? That it's time to make it a world where everybody can live a happy and healthy life? And I figured that the only time that such a thing would happen, the only time people would step back and realize it's time to change, if there was something pressing us to do so. If only there was something in the world that made it clear that it was time to change. <laughs> and luckily for us, something is presenting itself to us that it is clear that it's time to change. Because for the first time in human history, we have created a problem for ourselves that affects the one thing that every single human being has in common. And the one thing that we all have in common is our home. We all share the earth. We all live on this planet together. And the thing that I'm talking about is climate change. <laughs> and often when we think about climate change, we fear it, we feel hopeless or overwhelmed, or we put it to the back of our minds and go about our days, business as usual, because there's nothing that we can do about it. But I'm suggesting that climate change is actually the greatest opportunity for humankind I'm suggesting this because maybe it will actually allow us to take a step back and look at the world we have created and be an impetus to our change. Maybe it will allow us to finally unite together and create a world where everyone can live in harmony, in peace, and respect each other and the earth, and live upon an earth that is nourishing and nourished. Albert Einstein said that the significant problems we face cannot be solved with the same level of thinking we were in when we created them. And I think what he said is extremely applicable to the significant problem we have created for ourselves today, climate change. It seems that the level of thinking we were in when we created it was a level of thinking that we are disconnected from each other, that we are separate, that we, for, that we have forgotten that when the earth is flourishing, we are flourishing. And that when we are suffering, the earth is suffering. It seems that we have created this mindset that the earth and her resources are there for our taking and that we don't need to give anything back. But in reality, we're just a small part of this larger interconnected system of life. And now it's time to evolve our thinking from disconnection and separateness and to the new level of thinking that will allow us to solve this problem that we have created for ourselves. The level of thinking where we are interconnected with each other, where we are part of the earth and we are connected to every single other person. A level of thinking of interconnectedness. Because when we start to think about how we are interconnected, we'll begin to create ways that will, that will start to solve climate change and will start to solve humanitarian issues because humanity and the earth are inextricably intertwined. Last semester, I was abroad in Bhutan, a beautiful kingdom uh, sandwiched between China and India. 
And they promised in their constitution that from now on, they will always have at least 60% of their land covered in forests. And rightfully so, this nation prides itself in being carbon negative, which means that they sequester more carbon from the atmosphere than they emit. And within this forest, there is this tree called the Himalayan blue pine. It's a beautiful pine tree. But the Himalayan blue pine is experiencing a rapid dieback. And I got to be part of a research project that looked to investigate the contributing factors to the rapid dieback of the Himalayan blue pine. And unsurprisingly, one of the major contributing factors was the change in climate. So even though the people of Bhutan have not contributed to anthropogenic climate change, in fact, their nation has helped mitigate emissions from nations around them, their trees are still dying. Their trees are still dying because climate change knows no borders. Their trees are still dying because everything that we do upon this earth is interconnected. We often take action for and do what is best for ourselves and our family. Sometimes we consider our community and even our nation. But rarely do we ever consider what is best for the whole world. Rarely do people that have enough think about those who do not, and rarely do people that live in beautiful places think about the places that they're contributing to the destruction of. And clearly this way of thinking is not working anymore. And of course it is overwhelming to think how your actions affect the entire world, because after all we are just individuals. But even though we are just individuals, we are a network of and it was not one individual that brought climate change upon us, we did it together. And it will not be one individual or just the scientific community that brings us out, we'll have to do it together. And we should start today. <laughs> um, and when we start to realize and awaken to our interconnectedness with each other, then maybe we'll start to scope the reality where everybody can live in harmony with each other, respect each other, and respect the earth. In my hometown, we have um, a beautiful building called Font Hill, and behind Font Hill is a bunch of woods. And I usually I walk in the woods growing up often, <laughs> and uh, inside of these woods is a tiny house, and it's covered in graffiti, and middle schoolers have thrown trash in the windows, and usually when you pass by, you think nothing of it. But one time I was walking through the woods with a friend, and we came across it, and instead of just passing by, we stopped and we really looked at it. And when we looked closely, we saw that there was a quote at the top of the building, and it said, who learns will love and not destroy the creature's life Morning, we'll all.